Hey guys, it's story time. I'm gonna tell you a story, not that I wrote, but a story that I lived. This is the story of the golden quill pen. Now for those of you who are walking into this new year and you've maybe spent some time or want to spend some time dreaming about what could be a thing is going on in your heart that bring you life and you just, you desire to move more into those things or incorporate them more in your life. This is a story for you. This is a story about how, <laughs> how heaven, how God reminds you about who you are and gives you courage to step out into the things that bring you the most life. Now, for those of you who maybe have spent some time on my website or my Facebook page, you've probably seen my logo that has the little golden quill pen, the little golden feather. That little golden quill pen, although quill pens are indicative of writers, makes sense, but actually there's a story behind that particular logo and why I used it. And so that's what I'm going to share with you today. Many years ago, I received the message that my grandmother had passed away. I was living in California. She and the rest of my family were in Texas. She had been sick for a while. And, um, and so I was able to fly down to be with the rest of my family to celebrate her life. Now, I had, I had been working on a book. Actually, I had finished um, working on a book that I gave to my family that Christmas, full of stories that I had written specifically for them and for different friends. It's a book of short stories. It's called The Invitation. And I had written a story for my grandmother, but I never got a chance to, to read it to her. And when I showed up in Texas, uh, my father asked if I would be willing to read her story at the memorial service. Now, of course, I was in a place kind of mixture of all kinds of emotions and to get up in front of people and say anything was very terrifying, um, although also honoring to be able to, to share that story and just to, to honor my, my Nana um, by reading it. So I decided, yes, of course, I would love, to, I would be so honored to share that story um, as a way to celebrate her life. And I was really nervous. Um, I had gotten, I had met with the, the pastor who was kind of leading the service and he gave me strict instructions, whatever you do, do not cry, which I thought was incredibly absurd. Um, crying is healthy, people. It's crying, it's healthy, especially when you're grieving. But he thought that was a big no-no. So I spent a lot of time practicing reading the story. And I had honestly an incredible, I felt like it was an incredible encounter the night before the service, um, just practicing reading the story. And I was thinking about my Nana and I, I just felt like she was there. She was present in the room. She was championing me and she, was it was like I could feel her celebrating me stepping out and sharing part of my heart and celebrating her. Now what's really interesting is that the story I wrote for my grandmother is called The Dance Card. Um, my grandparents were really great dancers and so when I sat down to write her story what I pictured was her being invited by Jesus to this dance hall and the invitation that she held in her hand was actually a dance card. Well, in the midst of this story, she has this dance card and, and, and Papa in the story, Papa asks for her dance card and she gives it to him and he says, well, that's kind of a bummer. Your dance card is full. There's no room for me. And she looks at him puzzled like nobody else. <laughs> nobody else was here to sign up, Papa. Um, I didn't see any names on my dance card. How could this be? And then Papa reveals to her the dance card and she sees all of these words written on her dance card like regret and worry and anxiety and fear. And Papa says, you've been dancing with those for far too long. 
and he pulls out an eraser and he hands the eraser and the dance card to her and he says, would you like to erase all of the names so that there's room for mine? And so she takes and erases all of the names and then Papa pulls out a golden quill pen and he signs his name John Hancock style real big across the whole dance card and he hands it to her and says, you can't erase that one. The story goes on, it's very beautiful. And in the story, the name that um, my Nana has is Fearless. It's all about being courageous and fearless and dancing with God. And so I, I, I get up in front of everyone and I share this story. And afterwards, maybe the day after, my grandfather comes to my sister and I and invites us over to their place and he says, you know, Nana had all this day jewelry. He's like, I'm just going to give it away. But if there's something that, that's here that's meaningful to you girls, then I want you to have it. And so as we were going through all this jewelry, you know, there's my grandmother was so um, celebratory. Like she just celebrated life and had fun hats and fun jewelry for different holidays and stuff. Um, but so we're going through this jewelry and then suddenly I find this. It's a pen and it is a gold quill pen that my grandmother had in her jewelry. And I thought about this because I'd never seen it before. I don't remember her wearing it, but it was with her all the time. So when I wrote that story for her, it was kind of just this beautiful moment that God knew someday I would find this. And I think he knew someday that when I found it, I would know again, oh, I had heard his voice and that those words for my grandmother were just truly words of love from his heart to hers. So that is the story of the golden quill pen. There's a little bit more to this story and why it's so, that moment was so, such a marking moment for me, especially as a writer. And I'm gonna post a blog uh, on my website that you can go and you can check out. And it's, it's just a beautiful, um, it's gonna give you a little bit more to this story. And it's beautiful. So go check it out. But what I want to encourage you with is God is such a, an incredible God of scavenger hunts. He leaves clues. He leaves breadcrumbs. He leaves like special things in your path to encourage you about who you are. There may be little golden quill pens hidden in your life for you to find so that you know that he is tracking you. He is speaking to you. And he desires for your, your life to be extravagant and adventurous and full of wonder. Um, not boring at all. And the things that are going on in the deepest parts of your heart, for me, I've just always had a thing for stories. Whatever avenue they come out in, I just love stories. Um, and a lot of my life, you know... I probably spent thinking, I don't, I don't know how you can make a living off of this. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, to become a writer and be successful or to, I was a film major. So to go to Hollywood and be successful, like to try all of these things seems like such a long shot so often. Um, and there are a million dreams that like the world has not actually made a place for, but that you may be carrying. And I want you to know that the world will make a way because the entire world is groaning for you to figure out who you really are in your giftings and your talents but also in your identity as a son or daughter of god i just want to encourage you the things going on in your heart the things that you're discovering this makes me feel alive <laughs> why can i not do this for all of my life why can i not build a life on this I want you to know, like, don't let go of those things. There may be a journey and things, oh, like, flowing out of your life. Um, 
there will be a great shift. I believe that happens as people discover kind of the wilds within them and what brings them life and begin to fearlessly and courageously step out and just believe that things could be. For me, stepping out and believing, maybe I could write stories that, that allow people to encounter love. Maybe one person, maybe a lot of people, maybe my voice is worth sharing. There's a line from a movie called The Village that I adore. And this character, he's talking about a girl who is sent out to basically um, help save someone's life. She's blind and, and people are upset at this man for letting her go because she's blind and she could get hurt. And he says, no, like she is led by love. The world moves for love. It kneels in awe of it. The things that are alive inside of you, the things that bring you life, typically are conduits for love to be manifest in the world around you. And the world will make a way for love. So from one person learning to be more fearless and courageous to another, I encourage you this year, be mindful of what's going on inside your heart. Watch for the clues, the divine clues that are being left in your path to communicate to you that you're not crazy. And above all, just be motivated by love. Thanks so much for joining me. Check out that blog post. Check out my website. If you haven't gotten a chance to read The Wrestlings, it's on sale now. It's an incredible story and incredible things are happening when people read it. So check it out. There's an audio version with a full musical score available on my website as well as an ebook and the book itself, sarahrest.com. See you guys later. <laughs>